Now, for more on this, we're joined by TRT World's editor at large, Ahmed Al Burai. Thanks so much for joining us, Ahmed. Now, what is the latest on this? Can you bring us up to speed? What's happening from the, the time the president himself decided that we are going to have an operation in northern Syria, whatever the coast is. Now, what started is the first phase of the operation. He's going to be, I mean, Turkey army, the Turkish army is going to support the Free Syrian army to move in to Syria to try to impose the de-escalation zone that has been agreed in Astana. Now the Free Syrian Army will be the, uh, the spearhead of the operation. Uh, the Turkish army is going to support them uh, logistically and from uh, the air if needed. Uh, the problem is with the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham which is uh, dominating the Idlib province that is not willing or not showing any signal of complying with the de-escalation escalation terms that what I uh, pushed uh, Turkey to take such a proactive measure on the ground according to the agreement there must be a de-escalation zone whatever the price is now what's happening is what we've seen in the last few weeks the uh, the regime uh, of Bashar al-Assad is moving to the north uh, east of Syria and already uh, retaking and regaining many of the swaths of the land from the uh, uh, Daesh and the other uh, radical groups now Turkey is worried that if this going on the regime might be uh, encouraged to move into Idlib that would lead to another catastrophe that the same as what happened in Aleppo uh, late last year that's why this is a mission of peacekeeping in Idlib trying to um, prevent or at least diminish the um, number of casualties or collateral damage in case escalation started by Hayat Tahrir al-Sham in the city. The UN and the International Red Cross have been so worried about the rise of casualties in the past few weeks, calling September even one of the deadliest months since the war broke out. Now, before we talk about the operation, just a bit more about what is going to be the humanitarian cost here. Lives are involved, so many Syrians and and, and the other people involved in the operation. How secure will this be? Of course, in terms of if Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, and that's the problem, that's the elephant in the room, if they, if they decide to move on on their uh, stubborn policy and started to escalate against the peacekeeping process and the de-escalation terms, this is going to lead to an ultimate confrontation by a way or another. Now, the vulnerable um, category is the human being over there. The people will start a, escaping the territory are they allowed to, according to many reports coming out, that the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham closely uh, have a, a grip of power over the border crossing? They're not allowing them to go out. And in case this happened, the, be, the people would have no other choice but to leave to the Azaz or Tel Rifat areas that is under the control of the YPG. That is another major problem in case this happens in uh, Tel Rifat and Afrin that is mainly controlled by the uh, terrorist organization of the YPG, then Turkey would find no other way but also to find a way to handle it with Russia because we know that the presence of the YPG in that area is by the support of the Russians. So in case this happens, the people to have safe corridors to flee the area of a conflict, they would only find this area and the area of the Euphrates shield uh, in Jeraplos and Elbab. Again, the problem with these people, they will not have any a guarantee from the, the, these uh, uh, terrorist organizations in, uh, and they may be taken as a human shield. And that is increasing the burden over Turkey to try to interfere uh, immediately and try to save as much as they can, uh, they can of the, these innocent victims. Now, you've been reporting on the ground. Tell us a bit more about what you've seen and what you know about the reality there for, for people that are still stuck there. Of course, people are fed up, to be honest. A Turkey and the people were counting a lot 
on Ahrar al-Sham, the other moderate rebel groups that used to be an ally to Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, who fled uh, at, a, uh, at Aleppo and moved to uh, Idlib. Now, the problem is the people there, they're telling us that we thought that the Assad regime, Russia, Iran and their proxies are trying to amass all the rebels, putting them on one pot and labeling them as terrorist organizations, trying to have another uh, case scenario of Aleppo in Idlib. And people were really po uh, worried because of what happened uh, recently. Ahrar al-Sham withdrew from the Idlib province, leaving it to Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, and that is Al-Qaeda affiliate, or uh, formerly known as Najabat al-Nusra. That would give Assad regime and other like the allies in Russia and Iran a pretext for the international community to start attacking the people and as I've told you the people there would be the only victim because these rebel groups there know how to fight the guerrilla fight the street fight and they can escape they can just leave the city and move to the suburbs they do have lots of tactics and strategies to deal but the people would be trapped and they don't know what to happen especially if, if they compare themselves to what's happening or what had happened in Mosul in Iraq, the complete catastrophe, humanitarian catastrophe, where no hospitals, no food on the ground, no safe corridors for them to flee the city. What they were asking for, either Turkey or the international community, the United Nations, to provide them with safe corridors to just leave the city and try to find a way to deal with the terrorist organization in Idlib. So that this is a huge um, undertaking. Now, how do you think geopolitically this is going to be viewed by the outside world? We're now into around two hours since this operation was announced. Turkey was very clear at the very beginning geopolitically. They told Trump and previously told Obama, we cannot allow any kind of any terrorist extension over our borders, whether with, by the YPG terrorist organization, which is the extension of the PKK, or by Daesh and any other affiliates like uh, now Hayat Tahrir al-Sham in Idlib. So Turkey is vehemently against any kind of extension to these terrorist organizations. Now the problem is Russia can understand to some extent, according to the recent report, there is a kind of rapprochement or a convergence of perspectives between uh, Turkey and Iran towards these terrorist organizations. The Astana talk that uh, came out with this de-escalation zone is good on the ground and Turkey is pres a very a decisive to go on implementing and forcing every power to, f to comply with the terms of the de-escalation zone. Now the problem is again whether the international community would cooperate and see that what Turkey is doing is something to be appreciated and uh, the, on the other hand must be supported. So it's for Turkey, it's, it doesn't make any sense that you support me when it comes to Hayat Tahrir al-Sham and you just abandon or relinquish my concerns when it comes to the YPG. So it's either one package or it, because you cannot just uh, fight one set of terrorists uh, and turn a blind eye to other sets of terrorists. You, you should take them as one threat. Otherwise, this will not go on. And the other most important thing for the revolution or for the Syrian people is uh, now we've started talking about the de-escalation zone and the zones of responsibility, which is, whether we like it or not, is a euphemism of a soft partition. Mm -hmm. So what's happening, it seems that Assad is still there. He is not going to be removed. And these zones should be uh, the responsibility of these powers. So we have in the South, Jordan and the United States, we have Russia and we have Iran in the middle and the North and now we have Turkey on the border. So I think what so-called the revolution of Syria is about to reach its final episode and political solution is on the table. We, we hope so. It's been uh, nearly six very long years. Thank you so much, Ahmed Al-Burai, for that update and we'll be coming to you soon again.